here we have the brand new Revolution A1. Let's just look at it for a moment. What a fantastic looking car and it certainly makes me want to have a drive in it for sure. The whole purpose of this car, the concept is massive performance without the massive price tag. So for a sports car what you need is a lot of downforce and actually if you look a little bit closer on the car you can see immediately there's a lot going on here. It's a very very purposeful design. If we start off at the front so you can see that the car is very very purposeful looking there's a lot of air going in the front it's tripped up by this gurney flap which increases the efficiency but at the same time it's sending all the air on top of the floor as opposed to under which again increases downforce then on the sides at the front here you've got this dive plane arrangement but actually it doubles up as a vortex generator as it goes past first the wheel well and then behind the front wheel it's dragging all the air out but importantly it's cleaning up the airflow so that by the time the airflow gets to the rear diffuser it's much much cleaner. So a lot of time and effort was spent on this car to get the most perfect aerodynamics possible so we've got a lot of downforce very efficient downforce but most importantly the car is not pitch sensitive which makes the car much much easier to drive so big downforce that's not peaky and not difficult. So then if we get to the rear wing, first of all, it just looks absolutely beautiful. It's like a sculptured piece almost. Now the reason it's that shape isn't just to look nice, although it does. The whole shape has been designed so that as the air goes over the rear wing from the body, it, it then sucks all of the air out from under the rear diffuser and increases the efficiency of the rear diffuser. Again, to give you more downforce and more stability. What you notice straight away is this enormous rear diffuser. And the diffuser itself actually starts a long way forward under the car. And the great thing about rear diffuser, or diffusers in general, is that they're very, very cheap in terms of drag for the downforce they create. So very efficient. So having an enormous diffuser which is being sucked by the rear wing is a massive positive for the car. A lot of energy has gone into reducing the running costs of the car and the ease of maintenance. And just as an example of that, the nose isn't a one-piece item. So if you did have a bang here, for example, and destroyed this piece, this piece is just a small piece, easy to change. And the same is true at the back of the front wheel. So on the same theme as we get to the back of the car, if you were to damage this piece, it's actually a small section on either side, easy and cheap to change. But again, with the nose off, you can see straight away how easy everything is to get a hold of. You can change springs, damper settings, ride heights, cambers. It's all there, easy to get to. Absolutely solid. And the same is true at the rear. It's easy to get to damping, springs, ride heights. Really, really simple. As you look into the engine bay, you can just see the attention to detail and quality of all the components. The bell housing is beautiful. All the suspension parts, the pickup points, the exhaust headers. It just oozes quality. Here is the 3.7 litre V6 engine, but you can see just how low down in the chassis it's mounted. It's obviously for centre of gravity being very low. One of the downsides to a, um, a normal road engine normally is the centre of gravity is very high, but what you can see Revolution have done here is they've significantly lowered the crankshaft height. And if you've got the two engines side by side, this is a standard production engine, it's an enormous difference. The result of the work on the engine you can see straight away just by looking but the, the crankshaft height on the race engine is 110 millimetres lower than on the standard production engine and that's an incredible amount and it makes a huge difference to the centre of gravity. So following on the theme of simplicity, ease of build, ease of maintenance and low costs, this bearing in the pickup point in fact this bearing is used pretty much everywhere on the suspension all around in fact there are 38 of these then on the pickup points themselves they have these dowel system there as it bolts on so the dowel takes away all of the torsional loads and the bolt just concentrates on bolting this up so it makes the whole bracket much much stronger the same is true on the dowels on the upright too in this bracket the attention to detail is what is striking when you look at all these pieces and again they're beautifully made absolutely sculptured but because we're using the same size 
bearings and in fact the same pickup points all around the car. Cost-wise it's very very efficient. So speaking about the practicalities of this, this one pickup point is used all around the car. Top, bottom on the front and same on the rear suspension. So if you're a mechanic and you've got one of these in your pocket, you're carrying the right piece. On the upright, it's the same upright used all the way around the car. The bracket is going on this way, or this way, or this way, or this way, and that's left, right, front and back. Brilliant idea, very simple, but very cost effective. I think it's worth looking at the hub. Just look at the attention to detail, the brilliant design, and the strength. It's absolutely beautiful. The same can be said for the upright itself. Massive bearing to take all the load. These cooling channels. Yeah. So what's the first thing a top race team does when they receive a new car from a manufacturer? Well, they take the whole car apart and rebuild it. So what we've done here, once you've got the chassis, engine and gearbox, every component you need to build this car into a complete car is actually stored in these two packing cases. So to make the point of how easy the car is to run, if there was even a very large frontal impact, this crash structure is easily taken off and replaced. So as you jump in the cockpit, the first thing you notice is just how wonderfully comfortable it is. And a bugbear of mine, everything is perfectly in line. The pedals, the steering column, it's just, you just feel at home with the steering wheel in your hand. And there's so much spacing in here. Yeah, I'm not such a, a wide-shouldered driver, but anybody who was will have plenty of space. And the other thing you notice as well straight away is everything you need, all the information is there. The screen is on the steering wheel, all the buttons and switches, the paddles, the brake balance. It's all there, easy reach, visibility is fantastic, and it just feels solid in here. So in summary, what, what have we got with this car? We've got a very, very strong car, predictable, safe. Uh, easy to drive, but you've also got a car with a relative performance, something like a, an LMP3, but at a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the service cost. It really is a proper prototype sports car.